I'm about to turn 23. I heard somebody say, by the time you're 23, you're really only three years old in adult years. So you're essentially like an adult toddler that is just starting to get the hang of things. And I really think there's some truth to that. In fact, I was talking to my mom about this just the other day and we were almost laughing because I told her I'm tired of learning so many lessons. So in today's video, I wanna discuss the things that I have learned in the past year. Whether you are entering into adulthood now or you've been in this space for quite some time, we can reflect and go on this journey of life together. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Eva and in this space we talk about how to level up and live our dream lives. So if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing and keep watching. First off, I want to say I missed you guys so much. I apologize for the hiatus that I've been on and I'm so happy to be back. You will notice that the background is different and that is because I just moved. So that was one thing that was just taking up a ton of my time. I also wanted to focus in on my content strategy and just hone in on that. And I also have some really exciting projects that are coming down the pipeline related to the business side of what I like to do. So stay tuned. I can't wait to share more details with you guys soon. And for those of you that watched the video, uh, Turn Your Life Into a Game and who were interested in that habit tracker, I am in the process of having that be made right now. I'm so sorry it's taking so long. I definitely have not forgotten. There's just been a ton of things to do, but I'm just so happy to be back because I love to be able to write down my thoughts and then talk to you guys about them because I feel like we all get to grow and learn together and I get to create my dream life and also help other people create their dream life. So to me, that is the dream. Okay, so with that being said, I have my notes on my iPad. Let's jump into the way life changes at 23. There are a lot of changes that come in this year, at least for me. And so it has been really important that I savor every single moment. And for you, this might look a little bit different. Maybe it's, you know, turning 18 and graduating from high school. Maybe it's turning 26 and moving to a new city. The one thing that is guaranteed in life is change. And for me, that has always been a struggle. It's been something that has been hard for me to accept. Friends move away, our priorities change, unexpected things happen, and Life throws a lot of curveballs at us that we might not always be ready for. In fact, I'm thinking of that Carrie Bradshaw audio right now that's been trending on TikTok. I'll insert the clip. If, if you know, you know. After all, computers crash, people die, relationships fall apart. The best we can do is breathe and reboot. Especially when you know that there is a change coming maybe at the end of a year or at the end of a certain milestone. What has been so important to me this past year has been to savor every single moment. So when I went to college, I met my best group of girlfriends and I pretty much lived with them up until this point. And so I just moved out of that place and knowing that I wasn't going to be living with some the girls that I had been living with in college for the past five years was it was so emotional like we we literally just moved out two days ago and thinking about it I literally get teary-eyed because I've just grown so much with these people and I've become more of myself if we're lucky we get to evolve and become more of ourselves and so really slowing down taking the time to not get so caught up with all of the distractions that are in our life, focusing on the stress of that assignment that you have to get done or your boss that has a deadline on a project. Just remembering that you are never going to have a moment exactly like this ever again has been so, so important. I wish I had more time to just sit in the living room with my friends and laugh and giggle. Of course we can still do that, but life doesn't stop moving. And so we are the ones that have to be conscious and slow down enough to actually enjoy it because we're also never going to get any younger. Slowing down also means pausing, looking in the mirror and just appreciating yourself, appreciating your skin, appreciating the way your body looks. I've talked to my mom about this before and she says that she wishes when she was in her 20s she had just spent more time admiring herself and loving herself. I think especially as women, there's so much pressure for us to obtain this unachievable perfection in terms of the beauty standard. 
and there's always something that we can find to have an issue with. But I promise you, 20 years from now, you're going to look back and just wish that you had appreciated the way you were exactly in that moment. So what I've been trying to do is look at myself in the mirror, touch my face, touch my skin, and just appreciate it. I could focus on the things that I want to change, and I think there is a place for self-improvement, that's a huge part of this channel, but another huge part of, I think, happiness and having a positive abundance mindset is being so pleased and accepting of the present state that we're in. So that's what I want to focus on. Okay, the next point on my list is that everything you thought you knew or everything I thought I knew, I basically don't know. Going back to what I said at the beginning, all of these lessons that I've been learning, I feel like there are so many things that I've just never had to deal with before. Insurance, mortgages, I just sold my mom's car and let me tell you, I learned a lot. <laughs> it was very stressful at times, but there's just so much to learn. I feel like I'm in this weird intermediary stage where I feel like a kid in so many ways because I'm learning so many new things, I'm having so many new experiences, yet I also feel like an adult because a lot of the responsibilities that come with adulthood I'm starting to tackle on. Being humble and recognizing that there is actually a lot that I don't know has been so, so useful. I think one of the unexpected things that I learned from realizing and really reflecting on the fact that everything that I thought I knew about life I really didn't know and there's so much more to learn is that I've had a lot of newfound appreciation and respect for my parents and just for my elders in general. Not only do people that are older than us have so much wisdom, but it is also their first time at life. This is my mom's first time having a 23 year old daughter. I think what it's really done is just given me a good perspective to treat everybody with a lot more grace and kindness and compassion because this is everybody's first time at life. We are all doing the best that we can and there is a lot of strength in admitting the fact that there might be a lot of things that we don't know and that is perfectly okay. Okay, the next big takeaway or lesson that I learned this past year is that it is okay to change your perspective on things and your beliefs because they will change. Some parts of your personality or some parts of your belief system might strengthen while other parts fall off. I was just talking to one of my high school friends about this the other day and I said to him, you know, I don't dream of labor the same way that I used to. I think back to myself in high school and I, I genuinely don't know how I did it. I was such an overachiever and all I could think about was getting into the best school, getting the best job, climbing the corporate ladder and that being my life because that was the idea that had kind of been sold to me or at least told to me since I was a child. And I've talked about this a lot on my channel. I had this big kind of epiphany or realization when I was getting really close to graduation that a lot of those things that I had spent so long thinking that I desired, I just didn't desire anymore. The craziest thing is that when I was talking to my high school friend about this, he said that he felt the exact same way. We took a lot of the same classes and, and we were pretty close and he said, you know what, Eva, I feel the same way. I don't know how I did that all in high school, but I'm just not the same anymore. And as our brains start to fully form, as those synapses are connecting, it is okay for our priorities to change. I think it was very scary for me for a while because it's like you're letting go of who you once were. But there's this quote that I've heard a million times, I'm sure you've probably heard it as well. The life that you dream of, your dream life, will cost you your current life. So in some ways you have to get rid of that old self, that person that you were before, that person that you've always been, to become the person that you are meant to be, to become the person that you dream of being. It is okay to experience those changes and to have your priorities shift. Next up on my list, decentering men is very, very important for my overall well being. I think that in the past, I placed such an importance on having a relationship that 
it would cause me to look at the other areas of my life, my relationship with my friends, with my family, with myself, and with God, and I would place those on a second tier because that male validation or that male energy was so, so important to me. Especially as I have connected a lot more with my feminine energy, I recognize the importance of balancing my own personal feminine and masculine energy. The more life that I have lived and experiences I have had, the more I realize the importance of those connections with your girlfriends, with your family, with yourself and with God. Not to say that a romantic relationship or having a strong masculine energy in your life is not valuable, but I think this past year I really looked at my relationship with that and knew that it needed to be adjusted so that the other important things in my life could take that sort of precedence. So for anybody that is experiencing something similar, I want to let you know it is completely possible to move out of that wounded feminine energy place where you're looking for that external validation, whether that be through social media, male validation, whatever, and move more into that healthy feminine energy where you can trust yourself, where you are self-assured, you're operating from a very creative space and can really just send out that good vibrational, high vibrational energy. I absolutely recommend checking out my video on how to love yourself and heal your feminine energy or how to raise your vibration, which I will link both above and in the comments. The advice that I've been able to follow through those videos has so, so helped me heal my relationship with my own feminine energy and decenter men as the primary focus in my life. The fifth observation that I have noticed about life at 22 slash 23 is that there are so many emotions that come with being in this stage of life. I will have days when I am crying one minute and I'm laughing the next. I've been realizing so much lately that my emotions are not me. My thoughts are not me. Just because I'm crying or I feel sad doesn't mean that I'm a sad person overall or that I'm always going to feel this way. Being able to ride the waves of my emotions have been so important this past year because with all of this change that has been coming, it's scary and I'm somebody that has a hard time with change. So being able to honor my emotions and let them come has been so healing for me. I think a large part of it has just come from having an increased emotional awareness because that is going to help so much as we navigate this really tricky, complex stage of life. I've always loved my birthday because I feel like it's the one day a year when you get to be really selfish and nobody else can really say anything to you. People always ask you that question, how does it feel to be blank age? I have always found that understanding the stage in life that I'm at now has always been so invaluable to me. And so whether or not it is your birthday coming up soon, I hope you are able to find some time this week to number one, practice some self-love. Again, the active word there being practice. And find some time to reflect to check in with yourself and genuinely ask, how am I doing? Inner work and this process of introspection and reflection has been so, so invaluable. It has brought me so far in my journey of feminine energy, in my understanding of myself. That is the number one thing that has helped me. So I hope you find time to do those things. If you would like completely free access to a ton of journaling prompts and inner work that I created, then just click the link in my description. But with that being said, I hope you all have a beautiful week and I cannot wait to begin posting regularly again, set up a better filming spot, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.